Have you ever wondered how prop traders actually trade? Well, in this video, I'll dissect my trading bar by bar, sharing all of my entries and exits, while our trading interns watch and ask questions. These are the strategies that have helped me succeed. In this video, you're gonna learn a few things. You're gonna learn how to identify the best stocks for a short during a pullback following a strong market trend, the concept of relative weakness and its significance in day trading, the concept of a gap fill and its implications for day trading, and a few key indicators we look at to catch a pullback following a strong trend. Additionally, you will receive invaluable insights on how myself and others at SMB manage risk and take profits in the trades we're going to review. So the first trade we're gonna go over is a breakdown and gap fill on AMD. This is from Wednesday the 21st. First, we're gonna start off by looking at the daily chart of AMD. We could see that AMD is trading at 52 week highs and it touches this 130.79 uh, and then it pulls back and then it finds support at this 116, 116.50 area. It holds there for a couple days and then bounces and then puts in a new 52 week high. Well, what's interesting about this is, is it's a failed follow through new high and it fails hard. So it trades to new 52 week highs and then fails. Right off the bat, what I'm thinking is, okay, there are some breakout traders trapped in this. Uh, and they're gonna have to hit out. But what's also really interesting to me is that it also coincided with a higher time frame resistance area. So whenever we were looking at a stock, we wanna zoom out and then zoom in. So if we zoom out and we look at a weekly, we could see this 130 area was important in 2021 and 2022. You see it breaks above it, it holds for two weeks, fails below it, and then it acts as resistance. And we're trading into that area, and we see that it's failed twice. Um, in addition, it's also failing the 21 EMA and the 20 SMA. So you can see it's done a really good job during this uptrend, holding the 9 EMA, the 10 SMA, touches that support, gets back above the 10 SMA, and it starts failing this trend. Um, and typically when a stock is in a strong trend and is holding those short-term moving averages like the 9 EMA, the 10 SMA, and then it fails below it and then fails the 20 SMA and the 21 EMA, um, that's a sign of a reversal or the start of a reversal. In addition, what we really want to highlight here on the daily is the relative weakness. So you can see this failure from this 130 level and then after that, what's really interesting to me and what catches my attention is that the NASDAQ continued to trade higher for three more days. And you can see AMD was just holding lower and slowly grinding lower back into that support. So AMD is relatively weak compared to the overall market after it's been so strong. So that is a sign of a clear change in character. Um, and the idea behind that is, and the theory behind that is, when the market turns, AMD should really break down pretty easily. It can't participate with the overall market when it's moving higher for those three days after the failed breakout. And then it's just holding lower while the market continues to trend. Um, so again, once the market finally turns, AMD should be one of the stocks that you wanna go to especially if there's a higher time frame support that is close to breaking through. And we'll dig into that a little bit more. So the one minute here, the two minute, the five, and then we'll also take a look at the cues. So um, off the open in AMD, what I notice is just that it's curling over and it's touching this 118, which was the prior day support. And if we look at the prior day here on the five minute, you could see that this 118 held in the morning and it held again in the afternoon. So there's clear support there. And off the open on the day of the trade, 
AMD holds, it holds, it holds, and it bounces, and it puts in a new high. But the high ends up being a failed follow-through new high into the prior day's resistance. So you could see that the day before, AMD was just trading in this range. Um, after the morning, 118 by 119, and it was failing from VWAP. So touched 119, touched VWAP, and failed. Again, popped into VWAP in 119 and failed. And then one more time, the next day, the day of the trade, pops into that 119, fails, it's trying to hold VWAP, then it breaks through VWAP, and we have our first trade set up here. The first trade set up is an opening range break. So the opening range is from about 930 to 945, and that's the price discovery phase. Um, and ideally, if you were a new trader, you want to wait for that opening range to set up uh, because it gives you levels to trade off of. Um, at the start of my trading career, I wasn't great at trading the open. I would see, you know, the, the stock I was trading is moving up. I would get long. I would be in the money and it would slam right back down. I would get stopped out and it would go back up again. Um, and really what I learned was that when you're trading off the open, it's really all about price action trading and taking profits fast. And I learned that if I just wait the first 15 minutes, I'll have some trade, I'll have some levels to trade off of rather than just like trading off of price action the first 15 minutes. You know, when you're a new developing trader, your price action trading skills aren't developed yet. And, um, you know, once I started just waiting for that first 15 minutes, I saw a big improvement in my trading. And oftentimes, if you don't trade the first 15 minutes, you're not gonna miss out on a major trend. There's always gonna be a pullback or a pull in um, for you to go long or short. So back to the trade, um, your first setup is an opening range break, very popular day trading setup. So we have the failed fall through new high, we have the failure from the previous day's resistance, we have the break of VWAP, and then we have the break of that 118 level from the prior day. So it breaks that 118, trades to new lows intraday, uh, and we have the third highest volume bar of the morning on that breakdown. So ideally, you want to take your short through 118. You could even start your short as it breaks VWAP versus a hold back over VWAP. Um, and then what happens is AMD, it pushes lower and it moves away from price. You get a quick 60 cents as it breaks 118 and it's holding lower. Now, when you're trading an opening range break, um, you have a few choices for a stop, but I really think that the best stop is a hold back in that opening range. Now, if AMD gets back above 118 and starts holding for say four or five minutes, I'm gonna cut my size or um, cut the trade all together. Depends how well it's holding. Uh, once the opening range breaks, you want to see price move away from that and you don't want to see it reclaim because it could be a failed follow through new low. It could be a short trap that squeezes you right back above VWAP. Uh, but as you can see, that doesn't happen here and we see the stock just trending lower. Uh, and the blue line I have here is the 9 EMA. And when a stock trends, um, below the 9 EMA, very clean, that tells me that there's strong selling pressure. And same for the upside. Um, in a strong trend, you'll see price hold above that 9 EMA really clean. Um, and at this point, there's really no reason to sell it. And then it trades into that 116.50 area. And if we just look back at the daily, you see that 116. So AMD gapped up on the 25th, and then it held that gap up price and it acted as support. But now we're back at that gap level um, and the market is also weak at this time. You can see that the Qs on this two minute chart here can't get above VWAP, can't get above VWAP, and then it breaks down and it's trending lower. So we also have the tailwinds from the overall market at our back, which is very important. Um, Anytime you're trading a market stock, long or short, if you have the tailwinds from the overall market at your back, it's gonna make the trade um, much easier and it's gonna increase your win rate 
them and your probability on that trade by a lot. So if you miss the opening range break, well, you actually have another trade here at this 116.50 and arguably it's, it's a much better trade uh, than the opening range break because we have a higher time frame level and we have this gap. And if cracks 116.50, there is a high probability that AMD is gonna fill this gap because it's gapping up on air, right? Um, there's a saying in the market that most gaps get filled and that's because there's little volume, there's no volume being done here, right? It's just an after hours or a pre-market gap up. Not much trading volume done in this gap, so it's really easy for these gaps to fill. So we're watching this 116.50 area and it's holding, it's holding, holding, holding. But you notice that price action in this little consolidation above 116.50, it's getting tighter, it's getting tighter. And what's happening there is there's buyers and sellers uh, and they're fighting each other. And as they're battling it out, price is getting tighter and tighter and tighter until it breaks. And you see this breakdown of 116.50 on some of the highest volume of the morning. So we have on the break, decent volume, and then volume starts coming in and it continues to come in. And then we have our second highest volume bar of the day. And that volume confirms this breakdown. When we are trading a breakdown from a higher time frame technical level, one of the biggest checks in favor is a quick move away from price. And that's what we're getting here. We're getting the breakdown and then it's just moving away from price. It's not even testing um, that 116.50 level. Normally, you know, on a, on a breakdown, that's really not the best. You'll see it come back up, it gets back above it a little bit. It'll kind of like flirt with that level and then maybe it'll roll over. But the best breakouts and the best breakdowns just move away from price and that's what we get. In addition, we're watching, we're watching the cues or the spy and we're getting those tailwinds from the market. And that should give you a lot of confidence about this trade. Uh, something I also want to highlight while we're talking about the market is the tick. So here's a look at the NASDAQ tick. And we see that the first half hour of the day, uh, there are no positive ticks. You know, the market gaps down, so the tick opens up negative 1,000. It retraces to zero and fails. Uh, and something a lot of us pay attention to on the desk is um, whether or not the tick is holding above or below zero the first half hour. And we'll get into that. But for those that are unfamiliar with the tick, um, the tick is a real time indicator that measures the number of stocks trading on an uptick minus the number of stocks trading on a downtick. So essentially, it acts as a short term gauge of market sentiment. And when the tick is holding below zero, it just suggests that there's a lot more selling pressure than buying pressure. And I would just challenge anyone that's watching this to do a quick exercise and look back at market trend days and compare them with the tick. And you'll find that most of the time on weak downtrend days, the tick is holding below zero. And on very strong uptrend days, the tick is holding above zero. Um, and again, I just want to highlight that it's a great indicator if the tick is holding above zero or below zero the first half hour of the day. Um, oftentimes, we could be in for a potential downtrend or uptrend if you see that. And that's something that my team is looking at every morning. So now that we're in and, you know, whether you call it the opening range break or whether you call it the higher time frame breakdown, um, we should be asking ourselves, like, where do we think this could go? Uh, and one of the first things I do is I look at ATR um, and the ATR for AMD is $5.60. So if we subtract that from the high of day, that brings us to about $113.60. Um, and we also know that if there is ARVAL, which means the stock is just trading more volume than usual, uh, it could go a lot lower and that, that um, ATR could expand because more volume is being traded. And we also know that AMD is breaking a higher time frame resistance level, which could bring in, I'm sorry, higher time, higher time frame support level, which could bring in 
another wave of sellers and another wave of participants that are risking against that support level. And that's something to consider as well. Um, you know, if, if a stock is holding support, holding support, and then it bounces off that support and it's attempting to break out to new 52 week highs, well, a lot of higher time frame traders, they're gonna have their stop just below this area. And that's where that volume comes in. Everyone that's risking against this area sees that the market is weak. Um, they see the market internals are weak and they're thinking that they have to hit out of this. And then there is the, you know, like I said, the tendency for gaps to fill. And that's something that we have to think about as well. Well, if today is gonna be really weak, well, perhaps AMD could fill that gap. And if we look at the two minute, so sometimes, and this is a big reason why some traders prefer the two minute over the one minute, it just looks much cleaner. Um, and it tends to follow the nine and 21 EMA much better. And you could just see that after 116 breaks, we have our first test of that nine EMA um, for the first time since it broke through VWAP. And it pops up into it and it fails and it makes a new low on volume. Again, it's just consolidating below the low here, the low of day. It's consolidating below 115, pops into the nine EMA again, and then the selling really comes in. And as we're getting extended here, the tape is moving very fast. We're getting a really clean down move. And as we start to get into that one ATR from high of day, that's where I'm starting to take profits. So I'm slowly scaling out of my position as um, you know the tape starts to hold bids. I'm ringing the register on this trade. It's about one ATR. And then I'm always leaving a piece on just to see what could happen. Cause maybe it does dump into that 110 and fill that gap. Um, however, it continues to fill from the nine EMA. It's getting close to like that gap fill that 110 80 area. We see a change in character. We see the stock close above that nine EMA for the first time during this whole trend. And then it gets above the 21 EMA, and we'll zoom in on this, and it starts to consolidate. And then we have, and I'll just add that, this here is a sign for me to get out of my trade. It's a change in character. The trend is now broken, and it's holding back above the EMAs. But if that's not enough for you, the nine and 21 cross, which tells me that there is going to be a short-term reversal in the trend. Um, and that is the trade for AMD. Uh, you, could do, you do see that you know it's still weak. It can't quite get to VWAP, but it does fail back below the EMAs, puts in a higher low, and then goes on to test VWAP. And again, like I just really wanna highlight that this trade works so well uh, because the Qs are finally having that pullback and we're seeing the tick hold below zero the first half hour of the day. So a lot of moving parts to this trade, but I think the most important takeaways here are the relative weakness in AMD and that 116.50 level that it breaks through and the potential gap fill there. And again, when, that, when the stock is relatively weak and it's not able to participate in that uptrend with the market anymore, that's a good sign that when the market finally rolls over that the stock is gonna get hit hard. So we talk a lot about in good setups and trades that are working in our favor, like thinking about how to get bigger. Mm -hmm. So after the initial break of that 1650 level, in that consolidate, basically like after the trades going in our favor, after we have all these checks, at the break of that level, I mean, at least while you were explaining it, what I'm thinking is, oh, this could really go. How do you yeah. get big in that trade? And what kind of indicators are you looking for as it's working to add size? So that's a really good question. And I would just say that if you're shorting this break uh, and you see the volume come in, what you could do is you could take this short on the breakdown. Um, and what you would do is you would just risk to this bar reversing. Um, if this breakdown reverses and trades back above the high of this bar. Um, and I wouldn't use a one minute for that. I would just use a two minute. You're taking the short and you're risking to the high of this bar. If the bar reverses, uh, then you're stopped out of that extra size. 
But typically, I, I think that if you want to keep your risk tight because you're adding more size than you normally would, that's really the only stop that you could use is this um, reversing, this bar reversing. So if the stop would be um, the high of this bar is 116.64, I would just put my stop like 116.66. And even after the break of that level, like in the consolidation under it, there's not really any responsible way for us to enter because we can't control our risk off that 1650 level. Is that the thinking there? Yeah, you're a hundred percent correct. Um, you know, I just don't see how you could get much bigger, um, a dollar lower, a dollar below that. So, you know, again, that's why it's really important to like playbook these types of trades over and over and over and over again. That way you're almost like trading it autonomously, right? I know that 116.50 is a big level. I know that when it breaks this level, it should move away from price. Um, I know just from reviewing these trades over and over again that I need to hit it here. And if I am putting on more size than usual, I'm gonna risk it to the high of the breakdown bar. Because look, like if you're hitting in a thousand shares here and then it moves a point lower and you're like, oh man, I should have got more size. And then you're frustrated and you're adding a dollar lower. Well, now your average is probably like 115, like 70 or something like that. And you know, it pops back towards 116, it pops back towards your average price and you're getting nervous. It's just not a good way to trade. Um, and I think if you're adding size down here because you didn't get enough here, that's a FOMO trade and you're gonna get into trouble that way. You just have to accept the fact that, hey, my job was to hit that breakdown. Um, I didn't hit it with enough size. Next time I'll do better. I have a quick question about the same trade, right? So if, we, if we're assuming that we miss that first break of the opening range, um, and we're gonna try to get like that second chance, if you will. You had mentioned earlier that you noticed that it had moved almost an ATR off that, like it popped up and moved down. Um, and obviously in this trade, like there's a lot of things working in your favor. So maybe you feel a little bit more comfortable getting in there. But if for instance, the cues were, were a little bit stronger than they were off the open and you already have moved that like, percentage ATR off the open, like I guess like what, basically the question is what, what would you not, what would you see that would not make you take that second chance break? Uh, you're talking about the 116.50? Yeah, so you missed the opening range break. You want to get involved, but you know it's almost moving ATR. Um, so, like, you're hesitant. Um, so, like, what other things would you want to see? Um, or what other things would tell you that you don't want to take it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a good question. So... You know, at this point, the stock is down about half an ATR, um, you know, which is fine. And I wouldn't take this trade if the internals. So if the tick was, you know, random, like it is like it is on a choppy day where it's, you know, it's positive 600, negative 600 and it's just chopping around. Um, that would tell me that the market's likely to chop and it's probably not a trend day. Um, the reason why I'm confident like hitting a breakdown to new lows, half an ATR from the high, is because of the weakness in the market. Um, the Qs are trending lower. There's no ticks above zero. AMD has been relatively weak compared to the market, and now we have those tailwinds at our back. Um, and also, you know, something that I recommend everyone do is just get you know, for gray trade, it's called a market view, but really it's just a filter. And what you could do is you could just load up the filter with all the major ETFs, and then you would just sort it by percent on the day. And what I saw was that AMD, I'm sorry, SMH, the semiconductor ETF, was one of the weakest sectors of the day. Um, it was down there towards the bottom of that list. So 
there's so much working in favor for the trade, but say SMH was in the green, um, the market wasn't showing a clear direction, then to me, that's not a high probability trade and AMD is likely to bounce off that support. Really important to have the tailwinds from semiconductor sector, the tailwinds from the market. You have proof that, you know, the ticks holding below zero, um, all really important. But, you know, if we didn't have those things, then I wouldn't be taking the short down there. It's really important that that concept there. Justin, so one of the other things um, I liked a lot is how you differentiated the stop between the 11650 breakdown versus the opening range, which obviously makes sense. Uh, once you add on that next trade at the 11650, how are you viewing that like reason to sell wise? Is that more of a cash flow momentum trade that you're taking off there? Or is that the same you're looking for that one ATR target um, and the trend to end? This is like, again, where like the discretionary part comes in. If the market you know, wasn't as weak as it was, it would probably be a cash flow trade where I just cover into momentum. Um, but the fact that AMD is only in half an ATR down from the high, um, I'm confident that once it breaks this 116.50, it has a gap to fill. It could fill it really easily. Everything is in favor of this trade. Like there's so many checks in favor that you have to hold it. You have to hold it because the likelihood of getting a full ATR out of this when there's Arvel and it's breaking a higher time frame level is extremely high. Hey, uh, Justin, I have a question about the same uh, set up under 116.50. So you talked about how you look at um, an increase in volume and a sharp move away from price to confirm the entry. So, you know, in real time, are, are you looking at that entry under 116.50 and saying, okay, I'm going to wait for volume to come in. I'm going to wait until I see a sharp move in price and then enter. Or are you hitting it as soon as it drops 116.50 and then you know, reacting and saying, okay, um, you know, we haven't seen a sharp move away from price. We haven't seen volume. So it deserves like a risk reduction or it deserve it. Like it's not doing what I expected. Is it kind of like your, um, I guess the question is, are you reacting to it and waiting or are you kind of hitting it and then seeing what's going to happen? Yeah. So what I'm doing, like during this consolidation, I'm watching the level two like a hawk and i'm just seeing that um there's bids you know every time it comes down below like 116.60 they're picking it back up they're bidding in for it they're buying it um it's dropping below 116.60 you can see like it does it here it gets below it a little bit gets below it a little bit uh, and then comes right back up comes right back up and i'm noticing that it's getting tighter it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter it's compressing and then I'm just looking for that 116.50 to drop. And it's going to look different than like the, the tape, the time in sales, the level two, all that. It's going to look much different than it has the past four or five minutes. Like you're going to see it break and you're going to see those red prints flood the time in sales. Uh, and it's just going to flush that level. Um, and that's that's what I'm reacting to. I'm reading the tape and I'm reacting to what the tape is showing me. I'm seeing that 116.50 drop and I'm hitting the bids and I want to see those red prints continue to flood the tape. Like over here, it's two way action. Like you're going to see. Obviously, you're going to see that bidder every time it goes to like 116.60 below it. It lifts back above it, it lifts back above it, and you're gonna see the time and sale is gonna be green, it's gonna be red, it's gonna be green. And then that 116.50 is gonna drop and it drops 30 cents. And what, what it just looks very different. You just see the bids just being hit and you're gonna see the velocity on your time and sales pick up and it's gonna be red. I'm trading what I'm seeing on the time and sales in the level two. Um, and I'm reacting to that changing character on the tape. And I'm saying, if this is going to be a really good breakdown, 
uh, it shouldn't reverse, it shouldn't get back above this bar here. Yeah, and it's possible that it does come back up one more time, retest and then fail. Um, if this bar is taken out, I'll probably get out of half of the size. And then if it starts holding back above 116.50, starts holding back above the 9 EMA, um, then I'll probably get out of the rest. And if it does end up failing back, maybe try it again. Yeah, I'm really reacting to what I'm seeing on the tape. Like I'm not, what I'm not doing is like, oh, okay, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it broke 116.50 two and a half minutes ago, and now I'm shorting it down at 115.50 because I have the, you know, the confirmation of these volume bars. I'm reacting to that tape because that's the best indicator we have. Um, and it's really the only real time indicator we have, right? All the other indicators are lagging a bit. So that's what I wanna trade off of. And then as I see it moving lower and I see that volume come in, that's what's like giving me the confidence to say, okay, I should hold this. The market is holding lower. Um, SMH is the, one of the weakest sectors. The, the breakdown is just pushing away from price and like the volume is giving me the confidence to hold it. So reacting to the price action on the tape, the volume confirms. So we're gonna look at Tesla from the same day. This is a mean reversion trade. So you could kind of see um, Tesla basically over the past month has had a $100 up move um, with very little pullbacks and it's starting to get overextended. Uh, and if we zoom in, you can see that this one six, uh, I'm sorry, 260 level, good inflection point, you know, it's, it's failing from it, it's testing it, it's getting above it. Um, and to me, this move here, where it's kind of hanging out around 160, and then it has this move from about 260 to 280, um, this is almost, to me, like a capitulation move. So typically a capitulation is like described as like max greed or fear or like panic buying or like a, a blow off. And it's definitely not the cleanest because what you really wanna see for a capitulation is really um, high volume, like one of the highest volume bars of the trend. And we don't get that, but just like eyeing it out, you could see that it's been on a massive run and it's starting to get extended. Um, clearly there's people FOMO chasing this long and the shorts getting blown out. So in about three weeks, you know, we have a hundred point run with very shallow pullbacks. So I think it's fair to say we should see about a 20% pullback, um, give back about 20% of the move, or probably get a two ATR move sooner or later in Tesla when the market finally turns. Uh, and a lot of people were stalking this trade on the desk. So the morning of the trade, we see something that it's very subtle, but so far this year, this has been a good indicator of a potential backside um, in an overextended stock. And it's when the stock is getting overextended and then in the morning, in the pre-market, it tries to push higher, but it fails. And it tries to push higher and it fails. Um, and then it fades into the open. And if you really think about like what's going on here, they're trying to gap it higher, they're trying to squeeze it and it can't go. And they're trying to do it again and it can't go. Uh, and then it fades lower. And again, like this is a very subtle sign that could be a potential um, mean reversion day or backside day. Uh, you'll see this in a lot of low floats that are overextended where they'll try to squeeze it pre-market and it just can't go anymore, it just can't go anymore, and it starts to roll over into the open. So just like we mentioned in AMD, um, this is a market stock, so we wanna have the market in favor. Um, you really need those tailwinds from the market, even more so when you're trading an extremely strong stock and you're looking for that mean reversion trade, right? Tesla is one of the strongest stocks in the market right now, and if you don't have those tailwinds from the overall market, and you don't have the tick holding clean below zero um, first half hour, you wanna be very cautious and maybe you could put on a few feeler positions um, if the patterns are there for a short, but you really never wanna go um, full risk thinking of oh, today's the day because it's overextended, I'm gonna look for the backside 
um, but the market's not in favor. That's really, really important if you're trying to short a strong stock. So off the open, um, really no patterns to trade. So I'm just watching it, watching that opening range set up. And what I notice is this pop into 277, okay. Now it pops into 277 again, makes a very small new high by a couple cents, 10, 20 cents, and then it fails. Um, what I also notice is, you know, right away, I just notice this little trend here and I draw my trend line. I like to keep it simple. Then it starts holding below VWAP, um, retesting that trend line, uh, and it fails. And so I'm starting in short here. Um, and if you look over at the queues, queues are doing the same thing. The queues are failing. You know, at this time, the market's been open for 15 minutes, the tick. You know, it opens up at negative 1,000 and it's kind of climbing higher and it starts to fail from zero. It breaks VWAP, it trades back to lows, and it also goes red on the day. <clears throat> so a few checks in favor already. And then it breaks that opening range on one of the highest volume bars of the morning. So third highest volume bar of the morning. Um, and then I'm adding to my short here. Tesla retests that opening range fails and it starts to curl lower. And I really like that. Um, so, you know, you can see in AMD, it just pushed lower and it was weak and it never really retraced. But sometimes you get these pops back into the level. Um, that's okay. You really shouldn't get nervous about this. Um, you know, if you're in more size than you would normally be in, maybe you just hit out of some for break even to be safe. Um, but really, again, like, I think the best strategy for opening range breaks is to risk that versus a hold back in the opening range. Um, so again, like if this breaks back above this 273.25 and it starts holding back above and it's holding above the nine EMA now, I'm gonna cut that trade um, because then maybe I'm thinking, all right, maybe it's gonna pop into VWAP and then fail back to 273.25 and. Now I have a recent high to risk against above VWAP. Um, however, it curls over, starts making new lows, um, and then the momentum starts really coming in. And again, tailwinds from the market. So strong momentum coming in, you know, it's skipping points at a time. And I always like to ring the register on something like this. And that's not to say like, okay, it, it's pushing lower. Let me cover 30% here. And then two minutes later, I'm going to cover another 30%. When I see something hold on the bid, like this 269 level, um, you know, maybe I'll just ring the register in like 5% of my position or 10% of my position. But really, I'm waiting for a clear sign that the trade might be over or the trend might be breaking. So it touches this um, 265 level. And if we just zoom out, out a little bit. Uh, you can see it was a key level from the prior day, acted as resistance, got below it, kind of struggled to get above it, and then uh, volume comes in back above it. So a little bit of an inflection area. And I notice it trades into that 265, and then immediately we get a, a push off of that. It's about a dollar or, or $2.30 um, in, one, in one candle. And when I look at my five minute, you could see there was uh, either strong buying or a lot of short covering into this move. And you could see that with the wick here. So I'm covering the position. Um, I think it's gonna bounce off of this, but I also think it's the day that it could pull back like another 10 points. I think we could get two ATRs out of this. So now um, this is where the setup and like discretionary, like, this is where the setup gets like a little bit more discretionary, um, opening range breaks, very simple, uh, very clear rules for this trade. But what you're looking for now is a pop into an e either an EMA or a pop into VWAP and a failure to get short again. We get a bounce and the trend starts to break. So I'm taking a small short position in here. The reason why I'm taking a small short position in here is because I know that Tesla is overextended and I know that if the market continues to be weak, this thing could really pull back. And I want to be involved when 
short-term uptrends start to fail and um, pops start to fail, just because on true backside trades, the second leg is normally the better trade and it's the easier trade. So general rule of thumb for backside trades, um, and especially when you're fighting a strong stock, a stock that's been strong, it's okay to wait for a clear failure and then short for a second leg lower. Typically on a true backside trade, the second leg is gonna be much bigger than the first leg down. Um, and that's something that my mentor always stressed to me. Uh, if it's a true backside, that second leg is going to be much bigger and much easier to catch than that first leg down. So I'm short with about a quarter, maybe a little less of the size I plan in getting to. Um, but it puts in a higher low and it trades up. That's okay. I'm comfortable with the size I had. I have a nice chunk of PL locked in from the first leg down. Um, and I just have a feeler position on. And then I notice a pop and I'm always looking at what I'm trading. I'm always looking at a one, two and five on the two minute. We get a pop into the 21 EMA and it starts to fail. And you could draw that trend line. Keep it simple. Trend lines work, starts to fail and I'm adding to my short. Now I'm in about half the size I want to be in and the risk is to this high. If it gets back above this high, um, I would give it almost a 100% chance that it's gonna squeeze through VWAP and stop out some weak handed shorts. If it gets above this high, I wanna stop out because then if it gets above VWAP and then fails, you could try it again with a stop above that recent high above VWAP. It starts to fail again into that 21 EMA on the two minute. It starts to fail. And now I draw this trend line here. So now we have a lower high and a clear trend and I'm taking another short as this trend breaks and fails from the 21 EMA. It's taking another short in here. Now the stop for this whole entire position is this high here. Pops into that 21 EMA again on the two minute, fails, and we're back at lows. We're back at that 265. It breaks 265 um, and I'm adding more to the position. And this is, this is a momentum lot. This trade that I'm taking at lows, um, and you can see at this time, the Qs is making new lows as well. And that's adding to my confidence. Additionally, um, tick, not really getting above zero, still trading weak. And this is just a huge change in character for Tesla. Um, I would just challenge anyone that's watching this, take a look at the last three weeks intraday. You will not see Tesla trading this way. Um, so I'm thinking clear change in character, XLK, the technology sector, one of the weakest sectors. If, if it's going to be the day that Tesla rolls over, uh, if it's going to be any day, it's going to be this day. It's as simple as that. Um, so puts in a new low, see some volume come in. That momentum lot, Tesla starts holding 262. I'm covering the momentum lot. It trades down into si to 260. Again, those EMAs working really well here. Clearly a strong down, down trend. Test the nine, can't get above it. Fails into 260, starts to hold above that nine EMA for really the first time um, since that break of the trend up here. Uh, starts to consolidate above it. This downtrend is broken and the trade's over for me. Um, and then just something else that I want to note is the measured move here. So 277 down to 265, about seven points. And then you have very similar um, from the start of this, from the start of this downtrend, the breakdown, uh, it's about like five points or so. So typically when you're looking for a second leg, um, you want to look at that first leg and you want to look for a measured move. And then at this point, um, Tesla's ATR is $11 and change, and it's about two ATRs um, from that pre-market high at this point. So Tesla went up $100 in pretty much a straight line, pulled back 20 bucks, uh, and that's really what I was looking for. How much allocation did you, did you put on your first entry and that second ad? And, and what was the metric for, for how much you put in on the second ad? Or the first, I guess the first ad, I mean, not the second ad. 
Are you talking about the, the break of the opening range or are you talking about um, these trades? The break, the break of the opening range. Yeah, sure. So um, in here, I'm getting into about a third of what I want to be in. And then at this time, um, I see that the cues start breaking down. So that's confirming. Um, I'm adding a little more even before it breaks the opening range. Uh, and then it breaks the opening range and I'm getting into the full size that I want to be in. So over here, it's just kind of like a feeler, feeler right? Um, the stock is still green on the day. We do have like the double top and failed follow through new high. We have the trend break, but I mean, look, it, it could trade right back into 277 one more time, put in like a triple top. So this is just getting into a feeler, noticing like there's a change in character in the market. Um, you know, let's not forget what we saw pre-market in Tesla. Failed follow through, failed follow through. So just putting on a feeler, right? I don't want to put on full size here. You know, you take like a $2 rip and, you know, you're upset because the trade didn't really confirm. It's okay to put on a feeler, but you really got to wait for that confirmation, which comes when the queues start breaking down and we break through that opening range. That's when you can start to feel um, confident about the trade. So in here, very small size, and then getting the rest as the queues confirm and as the opening range break confirms. Okay, and, and a stock like Tesla that just, you know, trades like so quickly, like the price changes so quickly, how are you, are you still just entering with like a, like a buy at the offer type of order? Or are you, or are you more strategically like getting in uh, set like pieces at a time, like through limit orders. Tesla does so much volume that I'm comfortable just sweeping the bids. That's that's fine with me. Um, I would say that 90% of my orders are market orders. Um, and, and that's just because, you know, we're day traders. When I start to get confirmation or I see an opening range break, like what you don't want to do is put up a limit offer for a breakdown trade, right? Like that doesn't make sense to me because a good breakdown is it's just gonna, it's just gonna work, right? It's gonna push away from price fast and you're not gonna get filled on a limit order. Um, so, you know, I'm not too concerned about maybe a 10 or 15 cent spread. Like I wanna get in this because I expect it to move within the next couple minutes. So I'm not gonna fight for 20 or 30 cents or something like that. So once you're in the, 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 the size you want to be in, then, then where is your initial stop? Yeah, so um, this is an opening range break. It, it shouldn't get back above and hold back above this. Yeah, I would say about two thirds of it is if it starts to hold back above the opening range and reclaims these EMAs, like that's, that's not what I want to see. And I'm not going to take like a $2 rip on that through VWAP. Um, but, you know, sometimes you might take that $2 rip, right? Because sometimes it might be a false breakdown that um, pushes right to VWAP and you might not have a choice. So when you're thinking about how much you want to risk um, on this trade, especially with Tesla, because like you said, it has a tendency to move quick. Um, you want to be willing to accept that risk to slightly above VWAP. Right, right. Because I don't want to be hitting, you know, say I hit this breakdown and I think I'm risking, think I'm risking like a, a dollar and then, you know, it, it pushes through VWAP. I don't have my stop in or, or a silly mistake like that. And then you lose a dollar fifty more than you expected to. Um, that's bad risk management. That's bad trading. So I'm prepared and I'm willing to accept the risk on this trade to... VWAP, I already have it calculated. You know, if this gets back through VWAP, um, I'm prepared to lose X amount on this trade and I accept that. To answer your question, um, you know, sometimes it'll reclaim and start to hold and then sometimes it'll shoot right through and it'll, it'll be a short trap and it'll go right through VWAP. So um, the risk is to VWAP. Uh, Justin, on that second leg, so we get the first move down to 265. Um, on that first rollover, I know you talked about 
For this uh, one. The one. Yeah, the first one where you said 25% you were putting on. Um, so one of the things I'm working on is like being smaller and like giving it more room against me and then getting bigger where you have better prices. So if you got 25% there, how big did you get on that second turn? Yeah, just adding just adding another 25%. Okay. So if you got a pop in a VWAP, would you be willing to add more than 25%? Yeah. So um, there's a trade called a VWAP continuation. And basically what it is, is you have a strong trend in the morning um, and then you'll get a pop into VWAP. It'll put in a clear high, fail back below VWAP. And now if the stock is truly going to be weak, it's shouldn't it shouldn't take out that high above VWAP. So if we got that and then it failed, held back below VWAP, I would put on the rest of my size and everything would be um, to that recent high above VWAP. Everything you say like makes sense as far as the, the way stock moved, the way you traded that. Do you have any metrics as far as the stock selection? Like when you're in the trades, when it moves so well, like you just trade with it, like you traded before. Like the challenge is how do you, um, how do you, what are, what are your metrics to be in the stocks like this that they move so precise that as you want? Because there are so many, like you pick one variable and then once, once you're in a trade that you, you realize, oh, in like an hourly time frame is so extended. Like, I think your like selection is so perfect, precise. Like, I was just wondering if you have like any uh, like weekly reviews or like how, how do you decide, okay, like this is in play? So that's something that, comes over time, right? I've been trading for know, like five years, maybe six years full time. So really um, just consistently reviewing at the end of each day, seeing what the best opportunities are, seeing what moved the most after a big day in the market, um, reviewing trade setups. It really just becomes like second nature, right? So you know, why did I choose Tesla? Because I thought it was one of the most overextended stocks in the market. And I thought that when we finally got a change in character in the market, that this could see a big turn. So um, if I'm looking for a reversal in the market, I want to go to one of the stocks that were most overextended because you could see a lot of profit taking. And then I also want to look at something like AMD, right? We talked about the relative weakness. Um, you know, it failed from new 52 week highs. I'm sure it trapped a lot of breakout traders. And then look, the market's moving up for another three days and AMD is just stuck in the mud. It's relatively weak. So um, if you're stalking a reversal following a strong trend in the market, you wanna look at stocks that are overextended on the daily and you wanna look at stocks that are relatively weak, that have been relatively weak. Um, and I think if you're a new trader, it's much easier to go for the stocks that are relatively weak, especially if they're breaking uh, a key support level. And then, and then I think it goes without saying, but it's worth mentioning that when the market is in a really strong trend, like it's been and it starts to pull back, what you want to do is you want to get a list of stocks that are showing relative strength that are holding up really well. And the reason is because when the market reverses and continues its uptrend, those stocks are gonna have some big breakouts. Um, and that's something that my mentor is always looking at. So he's great at higher time frame trend following. And when he sees a pullback in the market within a strong trend, he's, he's always looking what market stocks are holding up the best, what market stocks aren't participating in this down move just holding up really well because when the market resumes trend, um, you know those stocks are going to have some pretty big moves. How do you distinguish between a pullback and a reversal? A reversal is, I think you could define that as, like this is a reversal to me. The stock tries to make a new high, um, traps traders, and it fails hard. Like that's a clear reversal. Whereas a pullback like the cues are just having an orderly orderly pullback, right? It's not really violent. There's been a strong uptrend 
and it's just having a slow pullback. So a reversal is more violent um, than a pullback. And typically with a reversal, you'll notice, you'll be able to notice like there's one side of the trade that's probably in a lot of trouble, right? In this case, it would be the breakout traders trading this to new 52 week highs. What would you have had to see on this breakout for you to take it with more size? Basically like, or to not view it as a cash flow trade, but instead as maybe something else. I'm already in as much as I want to be in, right? Um, so the ad down here, like I have to take this, right? It, it looks really good, but you know, like I have as much as I'm willing to risk on the position. Like I'm not gonna like triple my size in here on this breakdown. Um, you know, maybe if I wasn't in the size that I planned on getting into in here, then maybe I would take this with that same size. And then if it doesn't work right away, like just hit out or something. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve. And you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition. The traders in this room, this room right here is full of elite traders. Some of them are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day, and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills. Because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafiori, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that, allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and getting access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part, you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.